Welcome back to part three of this final three-part trilogy of my interview with composer James Zuen Howard. If you haven't seen parts one and two yet, though, check out the links down in the description below and then come back here to part three. Enjoy. How do you even start uh, writing a piece for the concert uh, concert hall? First of all, I don't want to embarrass myself in front of the musicians. <laughs> so that's, that's what I worry about for a while before I do anything. And I think, I, well, the problem is, as, if, as in the case of I Would Plant a Tree, the way I compose for film is I just start improvising. Someday I'll improvise on a piano, someday I'll improvise with a string sound, because everything sounds good on strings, it's mm -hmm. easy. But just sort of largely into my sequencer, which is basically a digital tape recorder. So you're just playing into it, mm -hmm. and I might play into it for five minutes. And as it's going by, I think, okay, take note of, you know, two minutes and six, uh, 40 seconds, there was, I bumped into something good there. And I think for me, it becomes a process of getting better at mm. recognizing when you've accidentally played something that's worth repeating. Mm, that's interesting. And that's the, I never studied composition, so I don't know, uh, unless somebody said, okay, use these notes, and you can only use these notes, that would make it a lot easier. Oh, well, putting a constraint. Yeah, of yeah. course. But when, you know, when it's infinity you're dealing with, it could be anything. You know, I, I tell young film composers, turn off the movie mm -hmm. so there's no constraints at all and just try and write some music first. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do with film music and also with whatever concert pieces I, I have written. And I didn't do that with I Would Plant a Tree. I kind of thought, okay, I'm gonna do a big sunrise. And I think I ripped off John Adams. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean to, I didn't rip him off, but I was very inspired by his Big Sur. Oh yeah, with the, with the violin uh, solo. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah, and mine was like a, you know, dime store version of that, in my opinion. I had other parts that I like, but I, I just didn't have a destination in mind. Well, you know, there was a des. I mean, to me, there was a destination. Uh, you know, You're very kind. Well, I mean, it's. I mean, it's true. There is a destination. There is this moment, actually. I don't know if you remember it. There is a part with nine trumpets, which that was the first thing that got out of me. I opened the score, and I'm like, "How the heck is there nine trumpets in this?" You know, typical and, uh, <laughs> Hollywood excess. But you know, I learned not to do that anymore. But you know, there is like a deep level of counterpoint going on, mm. and it's all written out. There are no boxes or any of that. No, it's right. Um, so that was the first thing that popped out of me. So I, that was the first time I actually thought, you know, I think he is recognizing that there are some things that he could do in this format that maybe wouldn't kind of go off so well in a film environment. I mean, if you were to write that nine trumpet thing in a film cue environment it probably be with boxes it would probably be a more constricted range because of what's happening on screen but getting to that climactic point for me i was thinking okay like he is recognizing that there is a journey to, mm. to go to okay fair enough You know, there is, I did write a piece in a film music with nine trumpets, and it was a fanfare at the end of a movie I did called Grand Canyon. And it was kind of, I kind of borrowed, see, what was that piece? It was, oh, that um, sounds so familiar. Yeah, um, it was a big <laughs> fanfare with trumpets. It was Sinfonietta by, it was a Sinfonietta by Eastern European composer, anyway. Maybe it was Janacek. Well, we'll yes, we'll Janacek, and I yeah, shouldn't that have said that because now everybody's going to re see how much <laughs> I borrowed from Janacek, but it was still a really cool piece. But I had, you know, that's the great thing in film music, you have kind of, sometimes you have monumental amount of resources. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, I want 
six trombones, nine trumpets, eight horns, and we're all going to sit in a big semicircle mm -hmm. and play this fanfare, and it was fantastic. But um, anyway, getting back to starting on a classical piece, I think you may agree if you can just get started, mm -hmm. but I don't know if you do it that way. Because if I just get started, I, I, I accept it at face value and just mm -hmm. want to keep going. You may get started and say, well, no, I can't, I, this doesn't work because I have to adhere to a certain aesthetic or a certain restriction. You can't mm -hmm. repeat any, I, you know, some of these things that you adhere to. And specifically, when you're writing a piece, it's not enough just to come up with a good idea and then follow where that idea goes. Because it might take you into places that are, that's bad. You'd be surprised. A lot of, <laughs> okay. especially if you're on deadline, we're yeah. on deadline too. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just have to just put pen to paper. But, you know, uh, your method, I mean, it's the Igor Stravinsky method. I mean, if Stravinsky had, a, had all this, trust me, he would use it because he would uh, improvise on the piano too. And it's just that he has to sketch the ideas as fast as he can before he forgets them. Well, and I think as an orchestrator, you know, you can't really orchestrate on that level or the level you do without pencil to paper. Mm -hmm. I make demos. Someday I'll play you some of my demos for my, you know, biggest sequences mm -hmm. that basically contain every note that you need. And then that's turned into a MIDI transcription, mm -hmm. which is raw data. It looks like music. And then I go through it and put in bar lines and blah, blah, blah. Then I give it to an orchestrator. And their job really is to take everything that I have played into the sequencer mm -hmm. and put it on paper for real life people to play. But... Mm -hmm you can't really get into the counterpoint the way you do on a complicated piece, the way you or Otis or Haas, you know, you guys do with, by playing it in there. It's just, I can do some degree of it. I made a pretty damn good demo of that part you're talking about in I Would Plant a Tree, it was yeah. now. But it was hard. Well, it just takes longer. You yeah. don't have that sort of time when you're working on a film right. cue. I mean, it has to get done. So a certain number of I, I read somewhere that John Williams writes like some crazy amount. I don't know if this is a normal amount, eight minutes or something, a week, or maybe it's maybe it's more than that. Maybe oh, no. it's not. No, is it I, eight minutes a day? I, something like I've something had days crazy. Where I write eight minutes. Eight minutes in a day. Depending yeah. on what the movie needs, because sometimes it just needs long, languorous sort of mm -hmm. pads, and they want a certain sound. I know how to do that. Mm -hmm. And then some days, you know, fifteen seconds, or some days nothing. But mm -hmm. You know, John writes pen to paper and with a piano. Yeah. That's maybe the way you write. I don't know. But I could never write like that. I mean, you know, these days, like all the young, like people, you know, people in my generation, the generation above, we don't have a kind of, there's no like taboo or anything about using any of this stuff anymore, actually. Oh, that's good. There's, everyone is using, sometimes, you know, me or my colleague or, you know, you know, pencil, paper, sure. But then you want to hear it. <laughs> so right. We actually do put it in the... Sometimes we put it in a sequencer. Sometimes we just put it in a Sibelius. Mm. But we do want to hear it. It's not yeah. that we we're not going to pretend that you know it, until we get to the first rehearsals, the first time we hear it. Right. Um, a lot of the times Dangerous. we do it for timing. Even. Right. Of course. So even that's one of the the things about demoing is timing more than even hearing the the piece. How does it unfold over time? And that's something that I hear even in your chamber music, like your sextet, for example. I mean that thing. Uh, for string quartet, flute, and clarinet. That I think you also wrote for James Ennis. I think I he did. was the other the Seattle Chamber Music Festival. Yeah, I mean, but that piece too. It has it. It it doesn't stop developing the whole way through. It kind of reminds me. I don't know if you know uh, Michael Torkey, um, this no. uh, composer, a uh, really well-known composer. But he he uses kind of the same gesture and transforms it. Uh, hmm. in a in a way that's almost minimalistic hmm. and i felt like you were kind of going in that direction with that sextet very different than the the orchestral pieces which are more beethovian in a way you know for me the sextet is the most successful thing i've written oh yeah i mean i, I, I thought it was really fun and they played the heck out of it you know he had I, well james of course and then it was principal clarinetist with the new york phil i forgot his name yeah, it's, it's just really fun. And again, I, I listened to it and I have no clue how I wrote that. That was just an accident. You know, I bumped into it and followed my nose.
So that yeah, too yeah. was kind of like this, we were talking about improvising. It started the, off that way, yeah. sure. And, and then once I, once I feel like I have the scent, so to mm -hmm. speak, I'm, I'm pretty fierce. Then I can go pretty well, but you know, finding the scent is, is hard. I mean, when I heard that piece for the first time, like this is very different than anything I've heard from you. Yeah. Film or concert music. Yeah. It was a direction that I felt like uh, would be really fun to see explored more. Yeah, um, I don't know how to do that though, because I can't remember how I wrote that. <laughs> but then you you remember the next time though. <laughs> yeah, I'll write something different. But um, yeah, that was really fun. James is actually going to be here in a couple, in about ten days, going to be recording for a new Terrence Malick movie. Mm -hmm. He did. You probably don't know him, but he's a legendary director in my business. High, high artiste. And his last movie was a movie called A Hidden Life, mm -hmm. where James is the soloist on on that score. And, I love collaborating with James. Yeah, I mean, it would be really fun if he asked you to write a string quartet at some point. I mean, that's the that's really what you got to do next. I saw that question. <laughs> string quartet. That's what I want to hear. <laughs> yeah, well, that's you know, don't hold your breath. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do it at some yeah, point. It's I on, guess so. it's on camera now. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I'm sure you've written a number of them. You I've only two. I've only written two that I would show to people. <laughs> really? Yeah, I just had one. Too? I just had one premiered a few weeks ago, yeah. Fantastic. But the string quartet, I mean, this is a medium that all concert composers, I mean, this is like... Dread. Oh, yeah. That and piano solo. It's even more also so than dread. orchestra. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, no, thanks so much, James, for, uh, for uh, you know, this discussion. It was fun to get to know this side really of your music. Fun. Yeah, yeah, I thoroughly and flattered that you wanted to talk. So, um, you know, continued success to you because you're killing it out there. Oh, thank you. We'll try and, <laughs> and give it, give my uh, regards to Haas. Yes, of and, course. <laughs> um, I might have sampled a little tiny part, like two seconds of a string quartet, but I can't remember. Would he be upset about that? I don't know. I'm sure he would be flattered by it. Oh, uh, if if tell me if he's okay with it, then I'll send him send him the okay the, the context of the sample. Deal. And sounds... if he needs some royalties, I'll write him a check. <laughs> Deal. All okay. right. Okay. Sounds good. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right.